Another week one in the books. There was some really sloppy football, but they haven't had many reps in the preseason. It takes time to get to game speed. But I wouldn't say it's anything out of the ordinary. Nothing insane happened in the process, right? Of course it did. Monday Night Football is the scene. The New York Jets have great expectations this season. With the young talent on their roster and an elite defense, all they needed was a quarterback to get them to the next level. Zach Wilson spent his time being an immature shit and blew his chance. They need a man of experience. A champion eager for a fresh start. The hunger of a thousand beasts voraciously consuming them whole. Aaron Rodgers is that man. He desires New York. The Jets have assembled the 2015 Green Bay Packers to suit his interests. Nathaniel Hackett, the famous refugee from Denver, back to be a yes man to the man that made him relevant. It is time. And Buffalo may be in the way, but they'll be a tough opponent. Bills are even hungrier than the Jets were. And that's no small feat. Last year's brutal disappointment must be avenged. A team that had gone sideways after pushing all of their chips to the center of the table is doing so again. Josh Allen is their franchise. And they will go as far as he will take them. It all leads to a week one matchup at MetLife Stadium. Don't discuss what happened here the night before. Giants fans are still sulking over their dreams being shattered for 60 minutes. However, today is a new day. A day of optimism. A day of excitement. A day of remembrance. 22 years since the greatest drama of a generation. Entering the field, Aaron Rodgers looks like the goddamn great kazoo yet as all the riz of Hulk Hogan fighting the Iron Sheik. You just want to root for this guy as he goes to hunt Bin Laden. The intensity is palpable. Jets fans are excited for the first time since the 9-11 Memorial Open. But that's sink in. But enough talk. New York's defense stymies Buffalo on their first drive. The time has come for Aaron to lead them to glory. The Rodgers rate will be unlocked. 75 seconds. It took just over a minute of possession before everything was ruined. The worst case scenario happened, and he wasn't able to complete a pass for his new team. Four days in darkness, four plays until darkness. Optimism immediately destroyed by their one glaring weakness. The offensive line. My god, who knew it was a bad idea to have geriatric Dwayne Brown as your blindside tackle? The dude was coming off surgery after playing through injury last year. He just started practicing two weeks ago. Sadly, that's far from the worst problem they have. Aaron's injury looks insanely serious. His calf looks like it was a plucked guitar string. Ending his season. That might be a career ender at his age. There was only one explanation for this. Occam's Razor. God hates the Jets. I don't care if MetLife's terrible turf just got replaced this offseason. Burn it again. Raise the stadium to the ground and move to where the Red Bulls play or something. This land is cursed. I was legitimately interested to see how Aaron would do here. And after this, we may never know. Just a brutal, brutal way to go out. With all momentum quashed, the Jets must rely on the black sheep of the family. The MILF man. This Jets fan is all of us at this point in time. We've been robbed. Jets defense, you're gonna need to move mountains in the wake of this tragedy. They bend a touch, but do enough to hold them just before they can do serious damage. A field goal will be acceptable, but considering they lost what they felt was the final piece, it might as well be 30 points. After this point, it may as well resemble the turf at MetLife. Mangled and miserable beyond comprehension. The Jets can't get anything going on offense for a litany of reasons mainly due to said terrible offensive line. But Buffalo? Josh Allen was infected with a wonderful spirit in this contest. Rex Grossman. No, don't run for the easy first down. Fuck it, he's going deep. And overthrowing his receiver by 10 yards. A fantastic arm punt. Joe Flacco is watching somewhere with pride. This is when the national audience remembers that Brees Hall is really good at running the football and might have been offensive rookie of the year last year if it weren't for injury. A beast of a run. And then everyone remembers that their quarterback is Zach Wilson. They cannot capitalize. A field goal is kicked to tie it back up. Josh Allen and the Bills then decide to stop playing games. They are men. They need to assert dominance. They're going to T-pose and push for the end zone. Methodical and efficient. And Allen reverts to the form that made him a rich man to help Buffalo resecure the lead. But can it last? If it's up to MILF man, that answer is yes. Matt Milano saw that ball and snapped it away like a hawk eating several baby ducklings. That's the kind of misery on display here. By the way, have another field goal by Buffalo just before half. The Boo Birds are flying down like rain in the night. The Jets know that their skilled players will have to do the work. And that they do. 
hoping to God that Zach Wilson doesn't do anything insanely stupid with the football. He doesn't and they kick it through the uprights for three points. For them, this is like winning the Powerball. But winning the game? A fool's hope, but still a hope. Yeah. Allen gets rid of it down the middle. It is picked again by Whitehead. Josh Allen keeps arm punting to his favorite receiver, Jordan Whitehead, then maybe they do. He's going back to year two for him. And this is with Sauce Gardner having a poor game. I don't get him. He'll pull this shit and then try to Big Ben leap five yards shy of the first down marker. I think I know why. Madden curse. Bucket. Can New York capitalize? No. Good for them, Buffalo can't solve the Jets' no-fly zone either. Things seem bleak for MetLife. Josh, we know they've gotten a lot from you, but they're going to need more. Pass is picked again! Guess who? Number three for number three! Throwing to his favorite receiver, Jordan Whitehead, again, his third reception of the day! That'll boost the spirits of this crowd. The Jets are even doing things with the ball on offense. The hearts of everyone are going back to original size. Garrett Wilson is getting the ball. Little did we know he moonlights as Inspector Gadget. Garrett Wilson, whoa! What a catch! Touchdown, Jets! Did he just do what I think he did? That's goddamn unbelievable! Zach Wilson threw a duck. Garrett played cornerback, swatted the ball away, then extended the same hand to fling it back to him, cocooning the ball for six. Jesus Christ, we're tied. Tied without Aaron Rodgers. Say, Josh, do you have any more fuck-ups you can give to this crowd? Here I come to save the day. That means the mighty mouse is on the way. And it's recovered by the Jets. The call is fumble. Dude went to the same culinary school famous Jameis did. Turnovers for all in attendance. I'm not joking. It's been his M.O. since the start of last season. The Jets can bury Buffalo right here. They got the first down on a fourth and one. Another first down ends it. Can they do it? Unfortunately, no. But they do take the lead with a field goal. And do you really trust Josh Allen with all the bullshit he's pulled tonight? I don't care about his reputation in town. I'm going to be skeptical until he proves it. Guess what happened? He returned to four. Even as Stefan Diggs commits the sin of OPI, he evades relentless blitzes for the final destination. Field goal range. A 50-yarder. The leg of Tyler Bass will have to be true just to survive. They don't take it. Bass. Hits the upright. It's good. That's definitely a way to tie the game. Hitting the left upright parky style and banking it in for three. President Bush is being alerted as I speak. Overtime awaits. Somehow, it awaits. In atonement for alleged slights in the playoff game in 2022, Buffalo wins the coin toss. They do jack shit with it. The no-fly zone is still in effect. Now, only if the Jets didn't have to trust their offense to do the impossible. Sam Martin corrals the snap. It's a short punt. Gibson on the return. Near side. I don't see any flags. Gibson inside the 30. Hits the Jets. And he's gonna go! Jets win it! Touchdown, rookie Xavier Gibson! Game over! This was magical. On 9-11, a New York team defied all odds after suffering a terrible setback and rose from the ashes to show the world they will stand tall. Mirroring reality so well it could be called propaganda. This really is the greatest game. Not in game quality, but in terms of drama and storytelling. If Hollywood penned this script, it would have been panned as cliche and unrealistic. But truth is usually stranger than fiction. Speak all you want about so-called asterisks and missed penalties, but the Jets deserve at least some comfort in life. Let them have this win. I think they've suffered enough for it. Josh Allen blamed himself for the loss, and he isn't wrong. But it felt like fate was guiding New York today. Besides, the biggest losers were in a Wisconsin bar. If the Jets lost, they drank for free. After Aaron went down, they drank the state dry. Beautiful karma. Oh yeah, Aaron. The torn Achilles was confirmed. A Pyrrhic victory of Pyrrhic victories. The Jets may have won the greatest game, but the cost may be far too great to bear. But time will be the judge of that.